Welcome to the channel everybody. So today I'm going to be doing a build video for you all. Solo and PvP builds. So I'll do a solo quickly first. Obviously with single player, like I am now, I'm in a single player game. There's there's really no threat to me. Um, other than puppets. But generally you'll go out and find that threat yourself. Um, hopefully within the next couple of updates we'll see some AI come into it where it will then cause you a bit of a threat especially in a single player setting okay so what we need to do go into building and then if you find base building no skill you'll find flags so with these flags it doesn't matter which one you choose they're all the same it's just aesthetics really we'll just choose the plain basic one with this in a single player setting as i said doesn't really matter where you place your flag in a PvP setting, it does because someone can take over your flag, and if they take over your flag, that means they take over your whole base, and they could just access it for them, which is not ideal. So, in a PvP setting, you'd place this around the center of your base, and then build around it. Can move it at a later date, but what we'll do is we'll just place it over here for now. Now, in a single player setting, you can enable what's known as God Mode. Now, God Mode just does this basically fills it in for you. You don't need to collect materials or anything. The thing this does though is it doesn't gain you any skills. You know, any dexterity, any constitution, any strength, anything like that. It won't gain you. Sorry, let me just go relieve myself quickly. So the the con of doing it that way is that you'll you'll gain no skill. So depending on how you're playing, if if you're not bothered, then obviously put God mode on and then just make yourself a base. It doesn't really matter. If you are bothered by it, then obviously I'd advise cutting down the trees, cutting down the bushes, you know, crafting rope. If you craft enough rope just by making a base, you'll probably get your survival skill up just from doing that alone. Um you know you can gain skills from this you can gain strength and stuff from this if you're transporting logs that sort of stuff running around constantly the only downside to this now as well is obviously we've got accumulated stamina so that will drain over time depending on what sort of actions you're doing so again if you want to use god mode use god mode if you want to know how to access god mode you just push t to talk and then set god mode hit space and it'll say true or false just down so true enter and it'll set it to true and in that way what you can do is do what i've just done there just fill it in without collecting the materials obviously if you want to do it so you gather items and you gain the skills from it set that to false and then you won't be able to do that you have to gather the items for it all intents purposes of making the video i thought i just set it to god mode but i thought i'd explain it just in case of this new players thinking how the hell are you doing that? That's how I'm doing that. Obviously in a PvP setting, in a, in a multiplayer PvP sort of server, you won't be able to do a god mode. You have to go and collect the materials. So, what we do, first things first, is obviously put our flag down. Come back to building. Now, with single player, as I said, we don't need to put any sort of defensive walls at the moment. There's no real threat to you. But, I will show you, because when... The update comes out when AI does come. Hopefully they'll have sort of attacking parameters to them. So you'll have some sort of threat to you in a single player server. So what we'll do is we'll grab one of these. Now this is again under base builder, no skill, wooden wall. Click this. I mean, you can build anywhere you want really. I'm just here just because it's a bit of an open area just to show you. What we do is hit F, we'll bring this along to 10 so you see distance of there 10 doesn't really matter too much about the angle let's try and get it on a dead number like 24 will do 24 10 so quick little tip for you this arrow make sure it's always pointing outwards because when you upgrade these they'll have barbed wire and stuff on the outside if that arrow is pointing inwards then the barbed wire bell on the inside of your base. So, fill that in. Then what we want to do, get another wall. Clip it here. Now, as you can see, it's moving about all over the place. If I hold shift, 
this will then bring it to a right angle or a 90 degree angle from that wall. So no matter where I move now, that will stay there. If I let go of shift, I move around, it follows me. Okay. So if you want a dead set straight wall, hold shift down. Again, bring this to 10, F, and then fill that in. So now we've got a 90 degree angle wall. So again, base building, no skill. We're going to stick in this for a little while. Single door frame. I'm going to stick one of them there. Fill that in. Now, get yourself a wall. Flip it on. Hold shift. Bring it over to it's in line with that. Say it's about there. Fill that in. And then we just bring this along and attach it to the end here. Fill it in. There we go. Nice enclosed area for you now. So now what you want to do is scroll all the way to the top and see now foundations. Get yourself a twig foundation. Pop that down get yourself another one put there, and then we'll do a three by six three by six is plenty enough room and then we just need to get our twig walls and fill it in Frames, single twig door frame, put one there. Now, it's given us max blueprints, so we'll go around, fill all these in. Okay, so we've got the basics of our base down. Okay. To get up in there, you're probably going to need some stairs, so just small twig stairs, these ones here. Just put them down. That'll give you a little ramp to get up into your door. So, get yourself a door, stick that on. Just like so. And then what you want to do is grab yourself a window. Stick it down. And then go back to your door frame. Stick one of them down and get yourself another door. So, in a single player setting, again, this isn't going to matter too much, but if it comes to a PvP setting and you want to use this build, you can do, because it's under 100 base building elements, as far as I'm aware. I think it's about 82, 83, last time I did this. Um, so, pop these on. And as you can see now, we've got a little airlock here. So in, in a PvP setting, if someone gets through this door into your base, and you're in your base, you now have a door, you you have a window here. So you now have a kill area. So if someone's here trying to get through here, all you need to do, bang, shoot them. You know? So you've got a nice little airlock there. Gives you just an extra level of security when it comes to your base. There you go. Pop these here, this still gives us the element of being able to stand here. It's kill area. So, now you've got your bottom floor done. What you're going to find is you're going to come up here and put floors down. So, put a floor here. Lovely. Oh, we've put a floor here. Nice. Ah, put a floor here. Nice. Okay, so we'll just fill all this in then. Because that's all we need to do, isn't it? Right, so now if we go to build 
another airlock here. As you can see, I can't build anything here. It lets me around the outside. So this is down to the modular building now, which now has twig support frames. So you're going to need to put these down in the bottom levels of your base. So this then provides support for any other elements you want to put above you. Okay, so now our supports are in and in place, come back up here and we go back for a window. As you can see, it now goes on there. It's the wrong way around. There you go. So now what we do is get twig walls on there, one there. Fill those in. Now, you can use a single door for this, but obviously it doesn't align properly, so it doesn't really look right when you open it from the inside. So, use a double twig frame, put one of them down, and then get yourself a double twig door, put one of them down. And there you have your second airlock. So if you're chilling upstairs, someone does manage to get into your base downstairs, you can just wait up here for them if you really wanted to. They'll come up the stairs and bang bang. Now, what we can do is just finish off the rest of this floor. Didn't want to do that. So if you do this by accident, what you can do is all your blueprints will line up here. You just click there and it'll disappear. You can also, as you've seen, hold F on it and destroy it that way. But if you can't reach it, do it this way. No, I want you there. So, what we can do is let's uh, get rid of this one here. Put a window at the back here. And we'll loop on a window at the front here. And fill the rest in like this. These windows just give you a bit of oversight front and back of your base. really want one there as well then you've got near enough a 360 view around your base fill these in so you've got two airlocks and two levels then need to do is add our crews which are here so you just pop these on So, with these areas here, it may be a bit confusing because you're thinking, well, how do I fill these in? There's no triangular bits. When this first came out, I tried using triangle twig roofs, thinking that would fit here. It's not that. What you need to do is grab yourself just a normal twig wall. So they have morphine in this. So as you can see, if you hit that, and we run downstairs and out the doors, it's cut half of the wall off. Sorry, excuse me, once again. So they brought morphing into the game so you can just use a normal twig wall and you can fill all those areas in. And you can do that anywhere in your base and it will morph if you've got a different shaped area. So like that, it cuts half it off. So you just fill in the half and again, that side. Run back upstairs quickly. Again, twig wall. Come on, where are you? There you go. Done. There you have now an enclosed base. 
So let's check this quickly. Let's put a couple of doors on here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. One here. And then one on this side. Yeah, that's what I thought, mate. All right. Now, as you can see, I've got a car there. The car will not fit through this gap into this area. So, what we want to do, ideally, is build ourselves a garage. So, if we take a quick look at our flag... We have 70 elements, and you have an enclosed base without a garage. So you've still got 30 elements you can use to put your storages down and stuff like that. I'll show you a little trick in a minute, but what we're going to do first, is we're going to build ourselves a garage. Pop this down on the corner. And then all we're going to do is get a wooden wall. Bring it down, hold shift. And line up this wall here. Fill that in. Bring this over. I think it appears somewhere. Or not. Let's do it from this side then. There you go. What we need to do now is put a nice double door on here. And there you have it. You can park your car in here, close your doors, and you've got an entrance then into here. Even if someone breaks into your garage, you still get through one door, one airlock, two doors, three doors. So three doors in total just to get inside this part of the base. They come through this way, they've still got to get through one door, two doors, three doors to get inside the main base. So they've got to pick three locks, or however many locks you've got on there, plus your, your defences, as well as you possibly being in here. And now they've got dial locks, which are, I'm not going to say impossible to crack, but give you a lot more time, and I think deter people a bit more than what a normal gold lock would. So we're going to finish this off in here because obviously if someone's in our airlock, we don't want them launching grenades over and over. So back to our twig walls. Pop one down. Grab another twig wall. Pop that down. So now what we have is a completely enclosed airlock. The only way they're going to get anything through is this window, but hopefully you'll be stood here waiting for them. Again, you can bring this up another level if you really wanted to, but you've got to bear in mind that this is going to take up more elements. and You've only got 100 at start. So let's double check our flag. And now at 79 elements. So it still gives you 21 elements to be able to put stuff down. So what we'll do is stay in building, come down to here. So we want ourselves a nice little cooking area. Pop that down and then we'll get ourselves a nice fire ring. Pop that down. There you go. Got ourselves a little cooking prep area. We can even come down to here on our basic, no, sorry, our medium, grab a storage shelf. All right, mate. You're right there. Calm down. Like that. And then we're at 79, 82. 
82 elements and we've got a cooking area and we've got quite a large storage space. So, all we need now to be able to live here is a bed. So you can use the improvised bed or you can actually get a different style bed which is a bottom bed. So we'll get this, I'm not going to pop it there next to the window. We'll pop this down right here. Then what we're going to do is get ourselves a couple of lockers. Stick them down here. So there you have a big storage area downstairs and two lockers and your bed cooking area. Okay, we're not even at 90 elements right now. So you've still got another 10 elements if you really wanted to get another 10 lockers down. A little tip for you. I'll show you this downstairs so it'll be easier to see. Now, go back to our flag. Say if this if you're happy with this, this is your base. Done. You know, this is a basic base you can use in single player. Put yourself a garage, you can go and grab your car, stick your car inside the garage and you're, you're safe, generally. Stick a couple of locks on, protection slot, happy days. Yeah. Ooh, back to the flag. So, as you can see, we're at 85 elements. Still got 15 elements, do what you wish with them. If you grab improvised wooden chests, okay, craft a couple of these. So we're at 85. We built this. Oh, they've changed it now. Oh, cheeky, cheeky. Right. <laughs> well, I didn't actually realize they changed that yet, but they have. So it used to be that these didn't count towards your elements in your base because they're movable objects. So I wonder if they've changed the garden now as well. So with the garden, we'll just place a pot down, build it. No. Okay, so the farm plot isn't part of the element still. So you can still place this down and it won't count towards your element. But they did change this, unfortunately. So we now no longer use chests as a spare element. Right. It's not the end of the world. Still got quite a fair bit of storage in here. Obviously, if I was to take this out of the flag area, put it in my car and drive away, that element would no longer be in my flag area. It wouldn't count. So, it's give and take with that. Again, you can get a few of these. You can get quite a few lockers. I mean, we've still got 15 slots to use, so we can still get, like, your weapons rackings and stuff like that. Wall mount. One stick on there. There's a the weapon, weapons racks. Then you're going to want a crafting bench in, in here for sure. Again, you've even got stuff like barbed wire you can place down around the outside. Again, this will take up some materials as well as elements. But there's our door here. There. <laughs> Let's check them. So if you go to the trader, you can get yourself an upgrade for your base so you can put more elements down. So when AI comes into this game, preferably I'm going to be using this sort of stuff around my base. 
because hopefully it will stop them a bit more. But I am very excited to see some AI in this game. I have been waiting many years for it. <laughs> but stuck by scum because it's just an amazing game for a survival game in 2023. It's top tier up there for me. I know some people have been giving it shit recently. And I can understand why. Obviously, there's been some things that people aren't impressed with, like the accumulated fatigue especially. I mean, even I wasn't impressed with that when it first came out. Glad they did patch it slightly and reduce it by almost half. Um, I feel like it's improved it a lot. I still want some sort of element of accumulated fatigue. Don't get me wrong, because, you know, I, I, I could play this for six to eight hours just sprinting around and it would barely affect me. But again, obviously you can go and get yourself upgrades and stuff like that. And keep building up. But it's just a standard little base build for you. Just to show you that it doesn't take long. It's taken me half an hour. With bits and bobs in between and stops. So it's, you know, it's, it's not that bad. This is in god mode, obviously. If you're not in god mode, it will take you a bit longer. Because you have to go and gather all the materials. But... This is a viable little place for you to survive. Again, set all your locks up, set your protection slots up. We've got plenty of storage up here for us to survive. With me in gameplay, I don't hoard stuff. You know, I'll, I'll go and do a massive day out, go and loot everywhere. I'll go to the trader at the end of the day and I'll sell the majority of my stuff. Unless it's a rare item or it's something that I'm needing, I'll sell it and then the money will go in the bank. You can lay landmines as well. So, if you are building, actually using tools and stuff, these are the sort of tools you're going to need. You're going to need nails, bolts, you're going to need a metal saw, an axe, toolbox, some rope. But with rope, you can craft rope with your sticks. Five small sticks creates uh, a 10 out of 10 bit of rope. So then you can use that to build. And that will then get your skill up in stuff like survival. Because you're crafting stuff. Grab a couple of them. So if you just right click on the mine. Click bury. You'll then bury it. So you can use these as a, as a deterrent for PvP areas. If the server allows them. Um, as well as obviously when AI comes into solo this will be a good thing to do is just mine out a small area in front of your base someone comes and stands on this it's uh, it's going to be a good night for them so and there you have it so it is armed as soon as you bury it you can't trigger it Obviously, if someone comes running past here, if they know what a mine looks like, they're going to spot that. Again, it doesn't look too different from a pile of rocks. But a trained player who knows what they're looking for will see that a mile off. So generally, stick them in grass areas, things like that. You know, if you've got a lot of this surrounding your base, it's going to be really good for mining. Because in here... Uh, why is this not doing this now? There we go. Take the shovel out of your hand and bury it here. And then we'll see the difference between it being in the open and being dug out like this. Take a little break because I have no stamina. Take another little break because I have no stamina. <laughs> there you have it. So it's there. But it's going to be a lot harder to spot than what that is. Okay. So you can mine out around your base. Perfectly fine. Doesn't take up elements. 
So you can put as many of them as round as you would like. And I mean, generally, cover your areas. They're not, if you've got your base like this, they're not going to be able to get in anywhere like that. See? Quite jumping over. And I've got three C2 injuries. Which, to be honest, isn't actually good because I have no, uh, I've got no medical stuff on me. I didn't think about that before I jumped on that. Um, it's okay. Let's just do it this way quickly. Whoopsie. But yeah, so barbed wire is great because they're not going to be able to try and jump into your base. But at the same time, don't jump on it yourself. Now, if they're around this area here, what you can do is build yourself stuff like barbed wire trap or barb traps. If you stand on these, they'll give you a C1. Obviously, you won't trigger them because they're your trap. Okay. You can also get stuff like uh, da, da, da. yeah, yeah, steak pit trap. So you put these in the ground as well. As you can see, it buries it. You can't bury this, but you can bury the spike, the, the spike traps. So again, if you really want to, so these will take up elements. But if you've got a spare 10 elements, go and stick a load of these around. Again, put them around the base if you've got loads of the, if you've got this sort of foliage around your base, it's going to be really good. Especially by your front door. You can put a few of those spike traps by your front door. That will cause them enough damage to probably put them off coming back. They might try and come back, but you know, you'll probably you'll hear those traps go off. You've got other different types of traps that you can use. Generally, I'd only use the state pot the, the pit traps. Uh, you can get silent alarms. You can get uh, firework traps, I believe. Flare traps. Firework traps. Obviously, you can't set them yourself, but if someone comes within this area of it, it will set it off. So this is the trigger area of it. So hide this. If you've got foliage, again, hide it by your front door. Someone will probably come sneak up to your front door. Bang, set it off. Fly up and then alert you, especially if you're not by your base. They're good signals for you. Again, another little trap. You can use it as a flare trap, which has much larger area. But with the flare, it's not going to make any noise as such. Obviously, a firework trap you'll hear going off in the air. This will go up, and then you'll just have a bright flare coming back down. So if you're looking for the flare, fair enough, you'll see it. But generally, firework traps are going to be more are going to be louder so you know you're going to hear them so other than that that is the basics of traps really again if you want put a load of these around you've got this foliage here you know you don't even have to bury this if you've got foliage like this unless you're right down here you're probably not going to see that Again, people that are running past your base and come sprinting past, bang, they're going to hit that and trigger it. And it's going to hurt them. So there's little things you can do to deter people. You're never going to get a base, especially in a PvP setting, that's not going to be raidable. Um, you can do it in a way where you destroy items as you jump in your base. But you have to rebuild them every time. So you're going to have them have the materials to rebuild that every time. Um... Generally, I don't 
build bases like that. Again, PvP settings with bases I don't really build um, unless I'm with a few friends or something and we're in a squad. If I'm not in a squad, I'm just soloing it in a PvP server. Generally, I won't build. If I can find a car, even better. I can go to and from traders with that. You know, I can sell, as I said, I sell the majority of my stuff. If I get to the point where I can't physically carry it in the car, then I might set up somewhere. But what you can also do, especially if you're starting off building and you've got a lot of items on you that you don't want people to find, you can bury chests. So put all your valuables in a chest. Go and bury it off somewhere where you're going to remember. And come back to where you're going to build with just your basic tools. What you need, like your chainsaw, your axe. Keep your pistol on your hip. And then this way, if when you're building, someone does come around in a PvP setting and shoots you, kills you. They're going to be like, sweet. I'll go loot him quickly. And they're going to find absolutely nothing on you. Now, they may look around the vicinity of where you're building to find a box. So, generally, I wouldn't build them, I wouldn't bury them, sorry, anywhere close to where you're building. That would be a dumb place to bury your box of all your valuables here while you're building in case you get shot. You know, go two, three hundred meters away, find a really dense area, put it there. Another little tip for burying boxes on the edges of canals. Or rivers you can generally bury boxes and they're very well hidden so if you find a river try and bury your box along it especially if you're building near a river because it will be more hidden it won't stick out like this because if you bury that in there it still won't stick out as much but people that know what boxes look like and that go around looking for them will be able to spot that even in slight foliage like this so just a quick little base build because a couple of people have been asking me how I base build, etc. And how to defend from PvP areas. Now, you might be wondering as well with this. What if someone just parachutes down in here? Now, you can, if you really wanted to, add foundations onto here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, the purpose of this, I'm not going to destroy that and show you, but I'll do it this way. You can add to export frames if you really wanted to along here. You don't even need to put these export support frames in to be able to do this, but I like to just because it, you know, it shows a bit more aesthetics. That it's something that's actually supporting the, the floor in. Then you just grab another floor and you stick it down. And then you'd put one here as well. And there you go. So even if someone was to see your base and parachute down now, they're going to parachute down onto that bit of the roof and they're not going to be able to do anything anyway because they're not going to be able to get out. So, yeah. Nice little base build. Quite simple. You can do it in 85 elements to get all your basic needs done so you have all of this ready. It's 79 elements in total to have all the outside, all the inside house, as well as your shed area, your garage area, your car. All the extra bits outside have gone over, but you just want your basic build without anything inside. It's 79 elements to do this build. It would actually be 80, 81, 82 elements if you didn't use the support structures and the foundations. So for 82, plus then you've got 18 left where you can buy, where you can get lockers, a bed. So you'd need a cooking area, which is a fireplace, and then a bed for your save point, your respawn point. Not your save point, sorry, your respawn point. So it's 84 elements, and then you've still got 16 elements for storage. So there's plenty for you to be able to build a base with the restrictions on 100 elements per player. Now, if you've got two squad members, you'd get 200 elements. So this gives you an extra 100 elements to be able to fill this in. 
because you'd only need one extra element which you've already got to put an extra bed down which you can put right there two beds for a duo and then you can just fill this in with lockers lovely jubbly so i hope this has helped some of you it's again not too difficult in god mode to be able to build in a, in a solo setting but again you're going to lose all those skills you, that you would have gained from doing it manually it does take a bit longer manually but i'd advise doing it because you're going to learn how to do it in the proper way you're going to gain all the skills from it And yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. I hope you've uh, got some use out of this video. If you have, give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. I'm going to be posting again tomorrow another scum video. It'll be an updates news video. It's going to be showcasing all the new little things that come out in the recent updates over the past couple of weeks. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you for joining me want to check out some of my other stuff you can right here until the next video guys see ya